Next we have Tara Cronin and Ed Chen. Ed Chen is the CEO and inventor at Vissery Chemicals, formerly Terra Leaf. He also serves as an NGO representative to United Nations for the Lawyers Committee on Nuclear Power. Tara Cronin is a recent MFA graduate from the International Center of Photography Bard program in New York City. She is the recipient of many awards and has exhibited throughout New York City and North America. Tactile qualities are very important in the work of artist Tara Cronin. Artistic inspiration has led to scientific developments to address environmental ch concerns as well, as well as the beautiful images we will see here on the stage tonight as well as downstairs. Join me in welcoming Tara and Ed. Have an intro. Science and art, art and science. They are all too often paired as sisters working symbiotically, inspiring each other. But how does that actually happen? Scientists and artists can think somewhat alike. They do things such as discover things that we didn't know existed, uh, make or personify or inanimate objects, or make the invisible come alive, literally or otherwise. One thing they share is that while art asks and conceives, science asks and proves. Both need to have the imagination and a notion of the impossible being possible to be successful. Okay, um, I guess this is just an introduction for yeah. me. Um, I, I'm an environmental engineer. Um, I had, and I was very concerned about uh, climate change issues. So I was working on CO2 sequestration. And, um, and as I was working on that, Tara was, has been very obsessed with um, this like uh, plant blood and, and, and blood in general. And I thought I would use it. And we actually chanced upon something that is a catalyst in Tara. We'll talk about that. Yeah, so um, how did I get started in helping to start up this sort of company? Um, first of all, I guess I could say I'm a lay learner. I'm a really dedicated lay learner of Sunda Sciences. Um, but mostly I'm an artist. Um, Ed and I have been a team for over 12, 13 years um, starting up with small businesses. And, uh, you know, I think being an artist is pretty entrepreneurial sometimes. Um, so these images started, yeah, as Ed said, because I started to find myself really fascinated with blood, chlorophyll, the blood of plants, however you want to look at it, dust, um, all these root makeups of the things that are really the, the root ingredients, how I see it, of what we all are. You know, I personally tend to get obsessed, I get neurotic, plenty of us do. Um, and I found myself thinking, you know, how crazy is this that underneath all the neurosis, under the digging, all of the conscious experiences that we have, we're just blood, we're sinew, we're synapses, we're just bone and skin. So I can't get over that, I don't know if that's really crazy to you guys, <laughs> but I, I, I love that contrast. Um, so these are some of the images I started to make photographically. Um, I started to collect all these, uh, all these materials. Um, so yeah, they're actually, they're actually photographically made, but with some sort of, uh, you know, not traditionally. Um, and I will say that, you know, in terms of our company um, and Ed's invention, I'm a big fan of mulling. Um, as in, you know, things mull in the back of your head. You know, people don't have like that eureka moment out of the blue. People have it after looking at this, reading that, seeing this. And, you know, I guess uh, after Ed saw some of the materials I was working with, um, you know, one of my, one of the materials ended up being part of the catalyst for his invention. So I really do believe that art and science can really inform each other in, you know, big and small ways. So, 
I'm going to say something? Yeah, please. So, yeah, and I, I think I just want to take that from the other side. Um, you know, often we think... Sorry. Oops. All right, so that didn't work. So often I think, um, you know, science is viewed as, as sort of a very, like, methodical and, you know, in school we're taught these are the laws of science and, you know, um, at least with my experience, you know, that, I think learning the basics of science is very, is very important like that, but, you know, going back to what you guys were discussing about the STEM teaching, I think that also, you know, kind of demoralizes kids in, in pursuing those sciences. And, you know, what I've found is that, you know, kind of being engaged with Taryn and, and, and the non-traditional sciences and kind of the humanities, it, it does stimulate, um, you know, thoughts and, and kind of it helps you mull as, or helped me mull as Tara said. And, um, you know, through this collaboration, we're able to create a, basically a reactor system that can pull carbon dioxide out of the air. Um, and it, it just uses, basically we're trying to simulate a, a plant. Um, and, you know, we have all kind of, everyone's really worried about carbon dioxide, but plants remove carbon dioxide from there all the time. So it kind of makes sense that we can do the same thing. And I think that kind of well, goes back to what Tara was saying about how, you know, we, there, there are kind of these basic components that, that make up nature. And, um, and just by, you know, there, there's kind of a, there's just a deep connection, I feel, between you know, every aspect of nature from like a micro scale to a macro scale. And I think that by looking at the whole picture, you can really get inspired to solve very specific problems, even if it doesn't seem like there's a direct connection. Yeah, I just want to also add that um, Ed's reactor just not only takes uh, CO2 out of the air, but also transforms it into other materials, as we saw my little, uh, my little diagram, um, which is, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking from other fields that you don't specialize in and letting that inform what you're doing for, on your own work, so. That's it, thanks. Yeah, that's it.